Hi everyone, it's Sharon with Sharon Sews. Welcome! Today I'm going to share with you everything that I sewed in January of 2020. When I was thinking back on what I had accomplished, I did not think it was much, but actually I sewed nine items from dresses to tops to pants to a couple jackets. So let's see what I did. Start with my animal print wrap dress. This is an ITY knit. I still have not fixed the cuffs on this, which you know about if you watch the video, my collaboration video with Carmen. This is pattern 8379 Vogue. It's a very easy Vogue pattern. It's been in the pattern catalog for a very long time. I do want to thank you for the positive comments I received on, on this. I wasn't sure if I was liking it or not, but I got some really positive feedback and I'm going to sew myself another one. Vogue 8379 wrap dress. This colorful little lightweight sweatshirt is McCall's 7839. Got a little chilly here in Texas over the month of January and I needed a couple little long sleeve tops but not too bulky so this fit the bill. I believe this fabric was from Boho Fabrics. It's got a really nice little print front and back. Super easy sweatshirt top to sew. One thing that I will do different is I made the sleeves too long and you'll see that in the little video when I model it for you and I made the band just a little bit too tight and you'll see that in the video also it rides up on the back. Other than that, I really like this little top. It's a great casual wear top. Now I did do a full bust adjustment on this sweatshirt. I used the pivot and slide method so there's no dart included. This top is from Alberta Style Magazine. This is top number 118 from the 32018 Magazine from the March 2018 Magazine. You can see it's got a couple little, couple little pleats here. It's got a little diagonal tuck. I don't know what I did wrong, but I've got this little extra fold there. I think I may have sewn it a little too far over. You can see this is actually, which I didn't realize until I started sewing it, this is actually two pieces on the front. So make sure you use a fairly lightweight knit for that. You could even do the front layer in a, a mesh or a sheer. That'd be kind of fun. But you can see this is, you can see this is actually two layers and it is sewn at that seam. So that's why I'm saying I think I might have sewn it a little too, I might have sewn it just a little too far over. Um, I need to fix that because it looks a little wonky when I wear it, which you will see that. This fabric is from Boho Fabrics. Once I fix this, I think I'll be wearing this quite often. As I mentioned, I think I need to pull that seam off a little bit and that will release that funny little fold that's happening there. The other thing, I think I need a full bust adjustment next time I sew this, a little more room in the bust line. I keep wanting to pull that top down when I wear it and that just tells me that it needs more fabric there. My Sandra Betsina jacket. This is Vogue 1574. 1574. This was one of my whips. I did do a video on this completely. I will link it above. I'll put it in the notes below if you want a more in-depth review on this. This is one that I just needed to add lining to, which took a little more time than I anticipated because of this bottom hem, which you can see I added bias binding at the hem and then that needed to be hand stitched in place and then the lining needed to be hand stitched in place. And I believe there was 108 inches to this, 108 inches to the hem, it's very full. <laughs> this is a great little jacket. I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this. Just wear it with a black t-shirt and a pair of jeans and a pair of boots, high heels, or with a pair of black pants. Now this colorful jacket is a knit wrap jacket. 
and it's actually a pattern from the mid 70s. It's a Betsy Johnson pattern. It is 3290. I'll have to look on Vintage Pattern Wiki to find out what date this was released and I will put that in the links below. I sewed this because there is um, a YouTuber, Vib Mom Sews, who is doing a challenge with another YouTuber named Joy and it's called hashtag joy viv so vintage or something like that i'll find the hashtag and put it below so i just thought that would be fun to pull out one of my vintage patterns and actually sew it this betsy johnson pattern 3290 from the mid 70s it's actually pretty in style for today maybe not the fabric i just really liked this floral fabric again 2020 goals i am sewing more color it's got little bell sleeve, it's got a shawl collar, it's a wrap, it's got a tie belt, and there's only one pocket on one side. That must be her design thing. I'm gonna go back and add another pocket. It also is top stitched, and I'll give you a close up of that top stitching. This is a very fun jacket. I could see myself wearing it with a black t-shirt and jeans, probably unbelted, but I see myself getting a lot of use out of this this spring and summer. I used a top stitching thread and I did not use a double needle. What I did is I used the edge of my presser foot as a guideline for the double stitching on all of the top stitching on this jacket. I don't think you can tell that this is a mid 70s pattern. It really does look pretty current. Now the pattern, this Betsy Johnson design, did have a dart already included, which I like because it makes it so much easier for me to do a full bust adjustment. However, the dart was really high on this one, so I did end up lowering it. I also needed to add more width to the waistline and the hip line to fit me properly. So I had this bright idea that I was so a pair of matching pants to go with that jacket, a pair of wide leg pants. Now the um, pattern that I used, the Betsy Johnson pattern, is a size 12 and those pants are too small for me. I didn't want to resize them. So I used McCall's 7786, which I've done, yes, 7786, which I've sewn multiple times. This is probably the fourth or fifth pair that I've sewn. It has that um, waistband in the front, elastic in the back and it's got pockets. The reason I chose this pants pattern to go with the Betsy Johnson wrap jacket is because the width of these pants are the same as the width of the pants on the Betsy Johnson pattern design. Now, sometimes things in your head are really good ideas and then you execute them and you go, what the heck was I thinking? Okay, when you see me modeling the two of these together, you will understand what I mean. It's got a real, Oh, it's got a circus vibe. It's got a PJ vibe. I will not be wearing these together. Um, for one thing, in the modeling photos, I didn't wear a high enough heel. I've got a flat shoe on, and I definitely had these so that I could have a little bit of a heel because I was thinking summer and I'd be wearing set sandals. Um, I will wear these though. I mean, I think it would look great with the top that I'm wearing right now. I should just put it on and show you. I would wear them I and mean, I'll wear them. They'll be fun. By the way, the top that I'm wearing is Itch to Stitch Nottingham top. This is the front knot, front twist top pattern that I like quite a bit, actually even more than the McCall's pattern that is proving to be so popular. Okay, side note, back to this. So, um, I love the pants. Don't love it with the jacket. It's, it's just too much, but it's a way for me to get more color in, and either of these will work great as separates. Oh, you get a little bonus shot of Tandy. I think maybe she was hanging out with me because it was raining outside. As you can see, I have flats on there. I figured I should wear some Betsy Johnson shoes since I'm wearing a Betsy Johnson design. And perhaps the pants, I would like the whole outfit better with heels. Although I do think it is just a little too much overall. Vogue 8930, 8930. This was one of my whips. This is in my whip video, which I'll link above and put below if you haven't seen that and you're interested. All I needed to do was tear it all apart and re-sew it. If you'll remember, it's because the fabric as I first put it together was fraying. And I just put it off for what was it, four years maybe? So I'm so glad I finally did. I love, love, love 
this jacket. I wear it so often. It is perfect for Texas winters. One thing I did differently is I, I lined, let's turn it inside out. One thing I did differently is I lined the sleeve. There you go. I just did a partial lining on the sleeve and I'm really glad I did because that makes it a lot easier to get on and off. In fact, if I sew this again, I would do that very same addition, line that sleeve. The other thing I did to keep it from raveling is I did a French seam on every single one of these seams. Then I folded it, pressed it to one side and I stitched in place, almost like a flat fell seam. The sucker is not going to unravel on me. Love it. You'll see how adorable it is when you see the modeling video. Highly recommend this pattern, Vogue sewing black, but actually I sewed these before I made the 2020 doll, so it doesn't count, right? These are basic black pants. This is Vogue. This is Vogue 9282. So they're basic black pants, but they're not basic black pants. They have a seam down the front and down the back. There's a zipper in the back. It's an invisible zipper, but what makes them unique is this detail in the front. It's a button front, and those are functional buttons and button holes. Now, uh, the fabric is a stretch suiting from Fabric Mart Fabrics. It, uh, it, it's a lot of polyester, it didn't press really well. And I like these pants so much that I think I'm gonna sew them again in something with more of a natural fiber so it hangs a little nicer, presses a little nicer. I do really like the pants. Now in the modeling photos of the pants, I've lightened it up quite a bit so you can see the detail on that. These, I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of these. This would go with that Betsy Johnson colorful floral jacket that I sewed. It would go with the Sandra Betsina red jacket that I sewed. Here I have lightened the video up so that you can see the detail of that button front trim. I really like that, very fun. And, I sewed it specifically to go with this jacket. This was to be a suit entry. There was a suit it up Instagram contest going on through the month of January. Well, I didn't get it done. I was having trouble making a buttonhole on this fabric. And of course I waited till the last day, right? The last day of the entry. So I was having trouble doing that. Thought it was my machine, pulled my old machine out to make the buttonhole. Had trouble with that, realized it's the fabric. So rather than fight with it, I added a snap here. What I wish I would have done is put a bound buttonhole in before I constructed it. But of course, once you have your facing and your lining it, it's too late to do that. So let's talk about the pattern. The pattern is 1667. This is Vogue. As soon as this came out, this is one that I purchased. And this is actually how I found out about this pants pattern because they've made it all in red as a suit, which I love. Okay, so uh, what I did differently on this one well, first of all, I, I goofed. I put the snap going this way. It needs to go this way. Easy fix. I fully lined the jacket. It is not fully lined. I don't know why they didn't line it completely. They have a partial lining in it, in the pattern. It's not that difficult to add the lining in the instructions. So it's lined completely and a contrast lining. Now the contrast lining on the sleeves, that was mostly because I did not have enough fabric to do that on the sleeves because what the pattern calls for is the same fabric as your jacket is what is inside of here. So pink, uh, it's okay. I think I might've liked a different color, give it a little bit more of a pop, but it works. Love the jacket. It is so comfortable to wear. This is, um, it's great. It's actually got a tiny little bit of stretch to it. And if you look at it really closely, it's actually got a stripe to it too, which I'm glad I caught that when I was cutting it out. So anyway, look at the modeling photos. This is definitely a plus, much easier to sew than you might anticipate. It's got a nice little, it's almost like a shawl collar, but it's actually a notch collar. It's a little bit rounded. I left the pockets off. I had put them on, didn't like them. Uh, when I sew it again, I think I might try it with pockets. 
and the sleeves. Actually, these sleeves are created with pleats. That's pleating in the back, that's creating that fullness. It's just a great jacket all around. I really like this one and you will be seeing me sew another one in the future. Everything I sewed in January. Like I said, I did not think I was that productive, but actually I think I sewed quite a few. Now I will tell you my absolute favorite is the animal print shawl collared wrap coat. That blue one, that teal blue. Love that. I wear that almost daily. Well, not when it's 70 degrees out, but once it hits the 30s and the 40s, I, that's what I throw on. Which one is your favorite that I sewed? Have you sewn any of them yourself? Thanks for stopping by and seeing what I said in the month of January. I've already had a very productive month for February and I have a lot more planned. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing so that you won't miss future videos. And until next time, I'm Sharon with Sharon Stowes and I hope you have a wonderful day.